Hey guys, Infidel1258. So I have a idea about what I think is now my new approach to handling rank grind and end of season and then the beginning of a new season. And I think it's probably the optimized use of anyone's assets. So if you have cards in the game and you are capable of generating rental revenue, I think you're going to want to do what I'm now doing. And I think it might be the best way to extract the maximum amount of return for the cards you hold. So I'll explain it quickly and it should be a short video, but definitely stick around, stay tuned. On this one, what I'm talking about is at the end of the season, first of all, I got to explain, you, you know, at the end of any rank season, you're, you're going to have that opportunity to re receive the maximum amount of rewards available to your account, whether you play in silver or gold or diamond or bronze or whatever, the type of rewards you're capable of reaching at the end of your season is the best of the rewards, right? Because you're going to be at your peak. You're going to be fighting at the highest level that you're capable of reaching because you've had the whole season to get there. And because of that, you're going to then be receiving the most, the maximum number of points per victory. And those points translate to more and more of the chests. Um, and, and so... Oh, and no, and in addition to not just at the end of the season, is there kind of a unique benefit to playing a lot? At the beginning of a season, there's actually a unique detriment to playing a lot. So hear me out. So like at the end of the season is great. You got the maximum rewards for your time and attention. You're getting the highest rewards possible because you're playing at the highest league you can reach. At the beginning of the season, you're pushed back three full league levels and you're you're bunched up with a ton of players who are hyper elite, like the best of the best of the best, um, who have fought significantly higher. Like picture, picture this, you usually compete at gold level one and you're, you know, that's your best and you get there every season and it's not that hard to get there, but it's your, it's your best. And you probably have, you know, you only need 200,000 power for, to do that, um, at wild. Uh, but you have 500,000 power because your deck really does, does need to be bigger than the collection power requirement in order to really thrive. We all know that. So let's say you got 500,000 power and you're, and you're competing at gold level one and you're comfortable there. You, you get, you get there every season. It's not a problem at the beginning of the season. What's going to happen? You're not a leaderboard player, right? With 500,000 collection power, you're not a gold one leaderboard. You're not. Unless you're extremely amazing. And if you are, I want to I see comments below on that, on that fact. But you're probably not in the leaderboard conversation. Some of those gold one leaderboard players are 20, 22 million collection power. And so you're just getting by at gold one. They're thriving. And, they, and even though the rank caps at 2799, for gold one they you can go be well beyond that and they do i mean i bet even now if we went to the leaderboard that we're just two or three days into the season i think two days into the season a day and a half even but if we go to leaderboard and we go to gold the the number one player is actually 28 15 and the second player is 28 10 so they're actually a hundred they're actually that's diamond capable that's where i'm at that's diamond. That's actually diamond one. And they're fighting in gold one. They're that far ahead of the league. So where does that league stop again? Gold one stops at 2800. Hang on a second here. Okay. No, I guess it is right. In the gold leaderboard, they haven't really pulled away from that threshold. But they have cranked up. If they were gold leaderboard last season, They've quickly climbed in a day and a half. They quickly, they would have been here, gold one. Yeah, they get they would have been sent back to silver one. And they've climbed 800 rank points. The best of the best have already climbed 800 rank points to get it. And so my point is, the competition is fierce at the beginning of the season with the best of the best being thrown back. And these guys are probably, like if we go leaderboard and we look at last season leaderboard, look at this. ULA Ocean had 3,300 rank points, which is, you know, I think medium diamond, like diamond level two, or maybe even diamond level one, I forget now. And it's it's just a crazy amount of rank points. But despite the fact that it's a crazy amount of rank points, he's still going to get pushed back the same way you are if you're a gold one player, right? Still going three ranks back. And these are your, so therefore this is your competition. 
the best, not just the the best of gold, but actually the, those who are capable of fighting in diamond and champion that are leaderboard goldies are going to be in your way. And so at the beginning of each season, you're actually least capable of extracting rewards. So there's this combination of at the end of the season, you can gain your maximum type of reward um, and quantity of reward. And at the beginning of the next, there's a very little opportunity to really extract dailies or even start building steam onto your, your, your seasons. So what I'm doing now is I did this just last season. And I think it works really, really well is I just play on my last, on my last day of the last of the season. I just play until my ECR is at zero. I, I mean, I will play hundreds of games and I'll throw the, I'll turn the bot on full blast. Um, I use Archmage, and so what I'll do is I'll turn, it has, you can set parameters, play until zero ECR, and you say four battles per hour. And if you're using Splinter Mate, it's even, it, it, you can crank it up even higher than that. So just crank it up and let the thing go and burn right down to zero. Why? Because again, you're getting at the end of the season, even at 50% ECR, even at 30% ECR, you're going to be getting... A, a huge amount of SPS rewards and uh, focus points, which is going to translate to dailies and seasons because you're at your highest possible tier. That's probably most similar to where you finished the prior season. And therefore it has implications on the season chest you're earning and the dailies um, are, are good as well. And so I really think you burn your ECR to the ground on, on the last day of the season. I mean, down to zero. And with a full intentionality of not even playing for the next four days, because it'll take four days for your ECR to return to 100%. It takes 25% per day. So uh, I did that. I, I went all the way down to 7% at the end of last season. Now I'm at 20, 42%. Um, it's going to take me two more, two and a half more days to get, get where I want to get back up to 100%. And at that point, much of these kind of the cream of the crop will be out of my way. They'll be well, as I showed you, some of the gold leaderboard people are already 800 points higher than they started with. And those are the people that you don't want to be tangling with and fighting regularly because they're going to actually push you down even further. You're going to lose in some of those matches, maybe many of those matches, and you're going to be pushed down even further. And so I think you you do want to fight as many as you battles as you can at the end of the season you don't want to fight for the first few days while the the herd thins out and additionally um the rewards that you're going to be able to extract at the end of the season are simply better than those that you're going to get at the beginning of the season uh and lastly there's there's another benefit that can happen that can come out of this and it's it's the fact that assuming you have cards that you own and that have rental value which is every card in the game um, you're not assuming you're not like a bronze, you know, three player. Um, you've got some cards that are going to carry some rental capacity, some some rental profitability. Then you just come into Peak Monsters and you just grab those cards and you just list them up for rent. And so on my main account, Infidel 1258, which I just said I burned to you know seven percent ECR at the end of the last season, I'm currently renting out for twenty two thousand five hundred DEC a day, and that's going to translate to more card purchases. And so. I, I don't see any downside to this unless you are, you know, um, and who's among those people with 20 million power. But if you've got that and you're really upper, upper echelon for performance in the game and you're a leaderboard player, then you probably can't do what I'm saying to you. But everybody else can. You've got the best of the end of the season. You've got you're not messing around and getting, you know, tangled up at the beginning of the season and you're going to have rental profitability from cards while your ECR is recharging. And you can just go ahead and do it manually if you want. You come in and you, you know, you know how to rent cards, but you can do it manually or you can use like specs.gg and access um, that automated system to, to, you know, maximize the rental profits available to you. So I really don't see any downside to this. And at least this is how I've played the game for a long time, but this is the first season where I'm like, Last season, I really went all out at the end of the season, and I got a hundred and a diamond, a diamond one, uh, fighting to get into champion three. I earned 111 SPS on that one day. I was earning, you know, anywhere from one SPS to half an SPS throughout the course of the day as my ECR went lower and lower and lower. And, um, you know, I was able to play that many battles between my the bot and myself actively playing. 
it just was nonstop. And as a result, I really benefited from that, from the SPS, from the season loot chests, the dailies were huge. I got 19, I think on the last day. And, um, yeah, quickly, let's have a peek at that. Um, this is the 29th. I had 19 loot chests, look at $2.81 because I was so attentive and playing so much and I didn't care about the ECR. I was able to pull out 20, 19 loot chests at diamond one and I moved into champion and it translated into a pretty decent season payout too. And so I really think this is the play. Just burn it to the ground on the last day. Why not? You're going to get the best resource points available to you because you're playing at the highest tier that you can reach. You have very few of those super powerful teams directly in front of you because they are probably three to 500 points ahead of you, even if they're in the same league as you because they're fighting for a leaderboard and that's what you need to do at leaderboard. And then lastly, I don't know about you, but I just can't fight at the beginning. So uh, I don't I don't see a lot of success. So I'm just sitting here st stationary waiting for the, my ECR to recollect itself. And um, I think it makes a lot of sense. What do you guys think? Leave a comment below. Let me know if you think it makes sense. Are you already doing it? Um, I may be just late to the game. But anyways, thanks so much for your time and attention. Have an amazing day. God bless.